In the previous session, we have seen this identity and its application. Now friends, in this session, we will see one more identity. Let us see this identity. This equation says that if we add two variables a and b and multiply it with a minus b, then it is equal to a square minus b square. Can you check if this is an identity? Let's see. Consider this expression. Let us simplify this by removing the brackets. It will be equal to this. Now, here since AB is same as BA, positive AB and negative AB will get cancelled. Therefore, we will get this. We can see that this is the expression on the right hand side. Therefore, this is an identity. There is also an interesting way to prove this identity. Let's say we have a square and the length of its side is A. And we will remove a small square with side B from it. Can you tell me what will be the area of this remaining portion? There are two ways to find the area of this remaining portion. Let's look at the first one. We can see that this remaining area can be divided into two rectangles. The length of the first rectangle is equal to A and its breadth will be equal to A minus B. Now, let us consider the second rectangle. We can see that the breadth of this rectangle is B and its length is equal to A minus B. But if we observe, the breadth of this rectangle is equal to the length of this rectangle. We can move this rectangle from here and fit it over here. By doing this, we get one big rectangle. The length of this big rectangle is A plus B and its breadth is A minus B. We know that the area of a rectangle is equal to its length times its breadth. Therefore, the area of this rectangle will be A plus B multiplied by A minus B. So, we get the area of this remaining portion to be this. There is another way to find this area. This area is actually equal to the area of this larger square minus the area of this smaller square. What will be the area of these two squares? The area of larger square will be A square and the area of the smaller square will be B square. Therefore, the area of this remaining portion will be equal to A square minus B square. Since these two expressions are equal to the area of this remaining portion, these two expressions will be equal to each other. This way, we prove this identity. So in this session, we have seen this identity. In the next session, we will see some examples related to the usage of this identity. In the previous session, we have seen this identity. Friends, in this session, we will see some examples based on this identity. Look at this question. Can you find the solution of this? When you observe these two expressions, you can see that this is in the form of A plus B, A minus B. Here, A is 2X and B is 3Y. Now, you can simplify this by using this identity. The result will be equal to 2x square minus 3y square. And the final answer will be this. Therefore, we can say that by using this identity, 
we can directly find the product of similar expressions. Let us move on to the next example. Can you find the value of this? Can we use this identity here? We can see that this is in the form of a square minus b square. Here, a is 5.04 and b is 4.96. So, this means this expression will be equal to this. On further simplification, we will get this. So, this is another way of applying this identity. Let us look at the next example. Can you find the answer to this? We can see that this expression is in this form. Here, A is 3 by M and B is 2 by N. We know that similar questions can be solved using this identity. So, by substituting the values of A and B, we get this. Simplifying it further, we get this as the final answer. This way, we can even solve similar expressions using this identity. Let us now look at the last example related to this identity. Can you find the answer for this expression? We can solve this expression in two parts. This is the first part and this is the second part. Consider the first part. Since it is in the form of this identity, we can write it like this. Now, consider the second part. We can solve it in the same way. So, we'll get this. Now, let's substitute these expressions we got in this expression. We can say that minus m square and plus m square will cancel each other. So, we will get this as the final answer. In this session, we have seen some examples based on this identity. In the next session, we will see some common mistakes that can occur while using this identity. Friends, in the previous session, we have seen the usage of this identity. In this session, we will see some common mistakes that can occur while using this identity. Look at the first question. Can you tell me the correct option? The correct option is B. Some of you might have got option A as the answer. Let us see why. We know that we have to use this identity in order to find the answer. But what should we take in the place of A and B? This is where we make a mistake. We take A as X and B as Y. So, we get this. Now we just multiply these coefficients like this. So we get option A as the answer. But this is an incorrect answer. We should take A as 3x and B as 2y. Solving this identity, we get this as answer. Therefore, the correct option is B. So, we should be careful to ensure that the square of the coefficients are also kept in mind along with the variables. Look at the next question. Can you solve this expression? For solving such type of expressions, we have studied these identities. Which of these identities can be used to solve this? Currently, it looks like this expression doesn't fit into any of these identities. But, 
Does this mean we cannot solve this using an identity? No, it's not like this. We can solve this using this identity. Let us see how. We can simply rearrange the second bracket like this. Now, if we look at this, we can say that our expression is in the form of this. In a plus b, a minus b, a is 2c and b is 3d. Now, using this identity, we can solve this expression. Hence, the answer can be given as these two terms. So, in the given expression, we should always check if the terms can be rearranged so that it can be written in the form of standard identity. In this session, we have seen some common mistakes that can occur while using this identity.